Okay, so this is the other experiment that we've been working on lately. And uh, this one, I'm going to vary the voltage instead of varying the resistance. So the way I'm going to vary the voltage is I've got a power pack over here and I can obviously uh, step up the dial all the way from two to six volts. I won't go any further than that because these little light bulbs actually have a setting stamped on the edge which uh, states how much it's uh, recommended for uh, how much uh, voltage it can it can handle before it starts to um, either blow up inside or it just reduces its uh, life expectancy so we're monitoring um, both the current and the voltage at the same time this time i'm using multimeters instead of the uh, the old school um, uh, ammeter and voltmeter so at two volts of supplied power how many volts am i actually getting uh, over here. So if I look at my uh, my voltmeter, which is in parallel, I'm getting 1.73 volts. And how much current am I getting? Well, this ammeter here is connected in series with the rest of the light bulb and all that. And we're getting 0.14 amps. And these numbers tend to flicker. I just think it's because uh, the, 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 the meter probably has another digit behind that uh, tends to like be a little bit undecided and that's causing like it to round up or round down. It tends to flicker a little bit. All right, so let's step it up to four volts and see how that influences our results. So four volts of power, how much is being absorbed here at the light bulb? We are taking up 3.30 roughly, or well, 3.29, 3.28, roughly in that ballpark. And how much current are we getting? So we're getting 0.19 amps so we're increase not only do we increase the voltage being used we're also increasing the amount of current and that kind of makes sense because not only does voltage mean like how much energy each charge has on the wire as it goes around voltage can also mean the potential difference between two locations on the, on any circuit so the difference between here and here so that's why we're getting a recording of a change of 3.27 uh, volts another way of looking at voltage is how much push is happening in these wires. So if I start increasing the voltage, I'm forcing those uh, charges to flow through uh, more rapidly. And if that's more charges go making through the circuit, that influences my current. So my current increases as well. However, we do have a light bulb here and it's an old school tungsten or filament or halogen or incandescent light bulb, however you like to describe it. And this thing functions by, uh, by heating up to the point where it starts to emit light. Now, the thing about electronics and heat is that heat makes it more difficult for charges to make it across. It's kind of like a traffic jam and people are getting more restless and the more pushing and shoving, let's say it's foot traffic, so you're trying to get through a doorway and if everyone's all packed up at that doorway, it's the narrow opening, kind of like this is the narrowest part of the path. If everyone's pushing and shoving each other, overall, the people who make it through is actually a lot less than if everyone calmed down and stood in a line and just all walked together as one. So the more random movement from heat energy, which is all the electrons, all the protons, uh, all the electrons are being basically gone chaos, and they're trying to make their way through this narrow opening or narrow part of the path, it's actually more difficult. So if I try and step it up to the maximum here of six volts, the voltage will climb, so we're getting 4.8 something volts. Okay, so that's increased as I increase the power supply. And the current has also uh, increased. Now we notice that when we doubled the voltage, we didn't necessarily double the current. We've now tripled the original voltage, but we still haven't tripled our current. So what's going on here? Well, as we supply more energy, more voltage to this light bulb, uh, it's heating up more, and if it heats up more, it starts to glow more, but if it starts to get warmer, we will actually experience a greater difficulty of electrical current. So we, we would refer to this type of object or this type of component in a circuit. We would describe this old, stool, old type of um, light bulb, we call them a non-ohmic resistor. That means that its resistance varies depending on the supplied voltage. If you have an ohmic resistor, that means that it basically behaves like expected. So its resistance is the same amount. So if I push twice as much, I'll get twice as much current. If I triple the amount of pu uh, push, I'll get triple the amount of current. 
but with a non-ohmic resistor, as you try and force more and more voltage through, it gets hotter and hotter, and therefore the resistance gets worse and worse and worse, which means that your current is starting to uh, um, level out. It, ten it doesn't tend to rise quite as uh, proportionally as to the voltage. All right, that's the experiment. So I'm gonna take these values from the video and we're gonna create a graph. Actually, I'm gonna get you guys to do this in class. So you can uh, make a little graph of uh, voltage on the bottom and then current on the vertical. And you can start to see that the, the graph tends to sort of peter out. As the voltage gets higher and higher and higher, your current becomes less and less and less increased. Thanks guys, bye.